This PowerPoint will give you a general introduction to some skeletal muscle terms. But the three that are probably the most important in order for you to learn of the different muscles are the origin, which is the end of the muscle that stays relatively fixed in position. So one thing to think about is that the entire job of muscle is to shorten and then return to its original shape. So if a muscle shortens, think of two people pulling at one another, say in a tug of war. And so you've got basically three different outcomes there. One is that the two individuals move toward each other. The second is that individual A moves towards individual B. And the third is that individual B moves towards individual A. So in the second two examples, you've got one person staying put and the other person moving towards them in this tug of war. And so the person that stays put would be the origin. The person that does the moving would be the insertion. So this is the end of the muscle that moves towards the origin. Now, as the muscle shortens, it becomes wider. And at its widest point of the muscle, this is where uh, that particular portion of the muscle is called the belly. So these are three terms that you're going to need to know uh, when you look at the muscles themselves in a later video. Okay, so as far as how muscles are named, there are seven general characteristics after which muscles are named. So we're going to go through these one by one. One is the location of the muscle. And this is when the muscle is named after its association with a bone or part of a bone. Now, before I go any further, I will say that there are times in which muscles are named after two of these general characteristics. So they might be named after location and its action or location and size. Um, but location of the muscle is when it's named after its association with a bone or part of a bone. And usually here you'll see terms like supra or infra or deep or just the name of the bone itself or the name of the muscle itself. So what are some examples? Um, the frontalis is named after its association with the frontal bone. The supraspinatus is named because it is superior to the spine of the scapula, therefore supraspinatus. Likewise, the infraspinatus is named after its position relative to the spine of the scapula, but in this case, because it's below it, it's called the infraspinatus. So this is the location of the muscle. The next characteristic is the shape of the muscle. So muscles can come in, uh, of course, a great variety of different shapes depending on their function. And so in this convention, the muscle is named after its approximate shape. Now, it's not an exact shape, of course, but it is named after its approximate shape. So some examples are the deltoid. And if you look at the deltoid muscle here, it is roughly triangle shaped. And a delta is a Greek letter that looks like a triangle. Therefore, the muscle is a deltoid shape or in the shape of a delta shape of a, shape of a triangle. The serratus anterior muscle is, if you look at the anterior portion of the muscle here, it looks serrated like a knife blade or a saw blade. And it's serrated on the anterior side so serratus anterior is a great descriptive name for this muscle. This muscle is the rhomboid major or rhomboidius major. And a rhomboid is a four-sided figure in geometry. And you can see here that this is definitely a four-sided figure. So rhomboid is a great name for this muscle. And finally, last but not least, orbicularis oris. And this goes in an orbit around the mouth. So the name of this indicates that it's in a circle around the mouth. And this is um, this is a, a name in which the location of the muscle is definitely also necessary because if you just named it the orbicularis, it circles. And what is a circle? So in this case, you have to give it an additional identifier. The size of the muscle is also a naming convention. And so this is when the muscle is named after its size. Now, there are a number of different ways that this characteristic can be used. Um, maximus can refer to uh, just a really large muscle, the gluteus maximus, which I think is a muscle name that just about everybody knows. Uh, the gluteus maximus is a really large muscle, and that's as opposed to the gluteus minimus, which is a much smaller muscle in the same general area. Vastus, of course, is going to be basically the same thing as maximus. It's just going to be really big. Um, the vastus lateralis is a good example because it's one of the 
uh, quadriceps muscles in your legs. So it's a really big muscle that's at the anterior portion of your thigh. Magnus is yet another name for large. Um, uh, the adductor magnus is one of the muscles that's on the medial portion of your thigh that brings your leg back to the midline. So when you press your legs together, you'll, you're using the adductor muscles. Uh, there's another muscle in the same group that's not big, but it's long. And so this gets called the adductor longus. Yet another muscle in the same group, which is neither long nor big, but it's short, so it gets called the adductor brevis. And so these three muscles all work together to bring the legs back towards midline. Now, this is another case in which there's more than one naming convention used. So they're not just named after their size, they're named after their action. Finally, you've got another couple of sort of paired terms, major and minor being the smaller and the larger of muscles that have usually similar origin and insertion points. So the zygomatic, zygomaticus major and the zygomaticus minor both have their origin in the zygomatic bone. They've got slightly different insertions and do slightly different things, but they're close, they're right beside each other. One's larger, uh, one's smaller, and so they get named major and minor. So, um, let's see, we just covered this. I'm sorry, the, going back to the, the general orientation. Okay, the number of origins is another naming convention. So this usually happens, or, or always happens, if a muscle has more than one origin point. And so you can see a muscle with two origins, that's called the biceps, um, literally meaning two heads, biceps meaning two heads, two origin points. An example of this is the biceps brachii. Another good example of that would be one of your hamstring muscles, which is the biceps femoris. Three origins is going to be called a triceps, and the best known of these is the triceps brachii, which extends the arm and actually acts in opposition to the biceps brachii. So you've probably heard of biceps and triceps, and these are actually these two muscles. With four origins, this is a muscle that would be called uh, the quadriceps. And the quadriceps femoris is actually not one single muscle, it's actually a group of muscles. They do the same thing, which is to extend the leg at at the knee joint. And so um, this is composed of four muscles, the vastus medialis, the vastus intermedius, the vastus lateralis, and the rectus femoris. But sometimes, just for convenience sake, these four muscles are referred to in one group, uh, the quadriceps. Now, one thing I do want you to notice here is that in addition to the number of origins, You've also got a location name here as well. So this, the, all of these are examples in which you have the naming convention of the muscle being more than one origin point and also the region in which the muscle is located. Okay, so the location of the origin and insertions can be another uh, naming characteristic. And this is when the muscle is named for the bones or the bone markings in which they have origins or and or their insertions. And so some examples of these would be the sternocleidomastoid, which has its origin in the sternum and clavicle and its insertion in the mastoid process of the temporal bone. So basically this is something that runs from your collarbone and sternum up to the point just below your ear, the sternocleidomastoid. And it's a muscle you'll see an animation of in the next video. The brachioradialis has its origin in the humerus, which is in the brachial region and its insertion is in the radius. So the brachioradialis basically runs from the humerus to the radius, and it would sh when it shortens, it pulls the radius back towards the brachial region.